Greetings adventurers, my name is Kramer, and today we're going to talk about shields in the context of a fantasy adventurer, because there are lots of different types of shields, which makes me wonder which one would a general fantasy adventurer sort of gravitate towards, not taking into account the class of the character or stuff like that. Now, it does need to be said that I'm not a dedicated shield expert. I am a generalist when it comes to shields, and I'm also not a HEMA expert, so there are lots of techniques that exist for using shields that I probably am not aware of or I'm not going to demonstrate properly, and I'm sure everyone in the comment section will be very helpful in pointing out points that I may have missed in this video. I'm not answering the question of which shield is like the best shield. I'm answering the question of which shield do I think would be really good for an adventurer to have in the adventuring context. And for that reason, I actually think the Targe may be the best option. It's on the heavier side. Um, it is on the smaller side too. They generally tended to be between 18 and 21 inches. This one is slightly smaller at just over 14 inches, just cause that's the wood that I had laying around when I made this. Uh, and it's it's made this is a this is the real deal. This is two sheets of plywood. The the grains are cross grained, so it has good integrity. It's pumped full of nails, and it's just about two and a half pounds. Um, so this is a decent shield. And if you punched someone with this, it would hurt them. Um, it is strapped on the back. It's not a center grip. And these are also used in a slightly later time period than the medieval period, uh, more 1700s, 1800s. But these were a battlefield shield. The Scottish Highlanders would take these into mass battles with them. They weren't used for shield formations. They were used for individual fighters. It's also still a good option if you are going to be on horseback. If we look at the Rohirrim from the Lord of the Rings, of course, their shields are actually not full-sized Viking shields. They're a lot smaller and that's because a Viking shield is much more difficult to use on horseback because it's huge and it's round, whereas something this size is able to move over, this, over the top of your horse's neck, it's able to be used a lot easier. While it doesn't protect your legs, you're able to use it from horseback better than a very large Viking style shield. Another positive about this shield design and this shield size is that it still allows you to dual wield, actually. I can grab my knife right here and hold it in my hand uh, while I'm gripping the shield. And this is something that we would see the Scottish Highlanders do with their dirks. My dirk is in the other room right now, which is why I'm using this Bowie knife. Uh, but you can hold it here, present a threat. I mean, I wouldn't use that as the main as the main source of attack, but it's there so that if you lose your sword for whatever reason, uh, you still have a weapon right there. And it's just it's just an extra threat. It's an extra way of engaging with a person aside from just punching them or hitting them with the sword. You have an extra point right there. That's something that you can't do with any large shield because the shield's just too large. Another thing I wanna add about strapped shields is, I don't know if I can do it with this one because I made my handle pretty small, but theoretically, I could have it strapped to my arm and if I had made the handle bigger, which I didn't think about uh, until just now, I could slide my whole hand through and wield a two-handed weapon like a spear or a halberd and still have the buckler on. Now I kinda wish I could make a bigger handle though because that is, that's a great bonus being able to do that and still have the shield attached to you. And I think that this actually makes a lot of sense for especially a ranger style character. A buckler is very, very small and I see it working better in a dueling scenario than like a full combat scenario where you as a lone warrior might be facing three to five people. There are depictions in the medieval period of actually archer units carrying a very small uh, buckler uh, right on their hips. So if the enemy gets too close or they run out of arrows, they do have something else to use because archers were generally using one-handed swords. They were gonna be behind the lines using the bow and arrow. This was more of a last ditch sort of thing and a buckler is better than nothing. So there is precedent for units to be carrying these around. So just have it right there on your belt, very easy to deploy and it's better than nothing. But I don't have a extensive amount of experience with bucklers, so I'm probably just making that up. There are probably some really good buckler users that can do things I can't even dream of with their bucklers. This is starting to sound weird. But there is precedent, especially for a ranger style character, to be using a buckler sized shield. A buckler's better than nothing, but I feel like something like this is even a little bit better. The shield this size is perfect for carrying around with you while you're actually on an adventure. It's not super cumbersome. It fits right there in the small of your back. It's not so cumbersome as the large shield is to get caught on things or get you stuck in doorways or doorway sized spaces. So this is, this is compact enough to take around with you. 
uh, but it's also large enough while you're actually fighting to give you a decent amount of protection in all of your windows. And a lot of the techniques are very similar. The only difference is that I can't really block that side because it's not a center grip, but a lot of the ideas are very similar in that you wanna be protecting your hand while you're fighting. But a shield like this is able to be a lot thicker because it is smaller. Where Viking shields wouldn't just splinter apart the second they were hit by something, um, but they were thinner. While they were covered in leather, they were also thinner, and that meant that they could break more easily. Whereas something like this, which is, which is able to be a lot thicker because it has a smaller diameter, and it's covered in a very thick uh, layer of leather, and it's got all of these nails and studs going through it, I don't think this is going to splinter. And I think the longevity of something like this is going to be better than something like a Viking style shield, while still offering more protection than a buckler would. And I think that that is a major consideration for an adventuring style character is how often will your shield get damaged and how often are you gonna need to repair it and what is the repair process like? If a buckler gets damaged, you might be able to bang some of the dents out, otherwise you're probably gonna need a blacksmith. If a Viking shield gets damaged, you probably just need to make a brand new one. Whereas I think the durability of something like this, which kind of seems like the best of all worlds combined to me, makes it very suitable for going on an adventure because of its durability and its protective capabilities. It's not the best at everything, but for an adventuring scenario, I think that this is a really good option. The fun thing I wanna say about this is because I made it, I have the ability to make another one. I have the ability, theoretically, to make an infinite number of these. Uh, it's, just the, it's just the material cost mostly, but I can do cut tests on this and not really care about it because I can just make another one and I'll make the next one better uh, after having learned from this one. So um, what I'm really worried about is doing cut tests on this and damaging my weapons uh, <laughs> because this is, this is beefy, it's hard. But if you would like to see me do cut tests on a, like on a real shield um, to see how it actually does, see what how much damage it can actually take, if anything, um, let me know in the comments below. I think I'll make that a Patreon goal. If I can hit $1,000 a month on Patreon, that's just to cover the material costs and the cost of repairing my weapons if I damage them, um, I'll destroy this on camera. <laughs> So I wonder if a shield like this targe might actually be carried by rangers, if that would make sense, because not all rangers use bows or use bows all the time. Some of them are just uh, going to be in the melee. They're just scouts. So something like this, which is small, compact, easy to carry around, but offers a decent amount of protection, I can see rangers carrying something like this. And I can see a lot of adventuring types carrying a shield like this due to its protective capability and its durability. Pretty much everyone aside from the most heavily armored of knights or barbarians, or people that just really want to use a huge shield, the general adventurer, I think this is a good option. So that's going to do it for today's video. I'm very curious to see what people actually have to say about this. I will see you soon. And in the meantime, I'd like to wish you good luck on your adventures. Mm -hmm.